In this video, I'm going to talk about the basics of using strings in C. So strings in C are actually just character arrays where the last character in the string is a special character called the null terminator that signifies the end of the string. So if I were to say here car test 5, I've made a character array called test that's going to store five characters. And here I'm going to say test 0 is equal to t, test 1 is equal to e, test 2 is equal to s, and then I'm going to say test 3 is equal to t. And then for my last character in the string, I'm going to say test 4 is equal to this special character here, slash 0, which is the null terminator. Then I'm going to say printf, and I'm going to say percent %s to print out the string. I'm going to do slash n, then I'm going to say test here. Now, if I go to print this out, we'll see that test is going to print out. We're not going to see that null terminator, though because that's actually a special character. It's actually a non-principal character, and it just terminates the string. It just signifies the end of the string. So when we use printf here and we give it percent %s as a placeholder, we're telling it we want to print a string, and then we give it the string here, test to print, and that's how printf knows that the string is done, is this null terminator there that ends the string. Now, we don't have to actually set a string with each individual character like this, there's other ways of setting a string in terms of initializing it with some initial value. So I could set it like this too. I could say test five is equal to test. And then same thing, I could still printf test and print it out. And what's going on here is this is what's called a string literal. And when C uses this string literal here to initialize this test array here, it knows that you know we're, we're initializing it here to a string, so it's going to automatically put in that null terminator for us. And so I could run this here, and we'll get test out again. And I could also do things like create a loop to access each individual character in my string too. So I could say here like for int i is equal to zero, i is less than, we'll say four here, or five here, we'll say I plus plus, and then we'll say here printf, and we'll say percent C, and I'll say test at percent D is equal to percent C. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print out I, and test at I, and we're just gonna be able to see each individual character of test here. And I'll actually just put some single brackets around the percent C there. So what's gonna happen here is we're gonna find that the null terminator isn't actually printed out. So we get like test zero is T, test one is E, test two is S, uh, test three is T. But then this last character here, the null terminator, we get nothing there. And it's just because it's a non-printable character. It's not something that's actually for printing out. We don't have to use a number here when we initialize strings either. So I could say something like this. I could say like car test two is equal to, and I could say some big long string. And we could print this out as well. and this is this is okay we can do this c can figure out how big of an array to make test two based on the length of this string literal and so we can we can run code like this and this is okay and so we'll get test two some big long string so now one important thing when working with strings is the string library and i'm going to make a separate tutorial video covering just the library because it's got a number of functions in it but what I'm going to do is I'll go over a couple key ones. So we're going to say number sign include, and we're going to say string.h. And what this has is functions that allow us to work with strings in a nice way. So I'm going to say that I'm going to comment out this code, and I'm going to use some of the functions in this library here to work with strings. So one of those functions is called string length. And the way it works is like this. If I have some string, I'll say here car my string is equal to some string exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. And I'm going to say here int length is equal to string length of my string. And what this will give me here, this strlen, it's going to give me the length of the string. And we'll just print it out. We'll say printf, and we'll say length percent d slash n, and we'll output the length. And let's just see what we get here. So I'll clear this. I'll run the compiler here. I'll run the program and I get length of 14. So let's actually see what length is actually giving us here. So length is actually giving us here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So length gives us the length of the string 
not including the null terminator. So just remember that the null terminator is not included in the length of the string, which makes sense because the null terminator, as much as that's part of the string in the sense that it's a special character, it's not really the, the length of, it's not really part of the length of the string that we care about, right? So if I wanted to do some work with my string, for example, like maybe I wanna count the number of maybe let's say S's that appear in the string, I could do a loop that uses string like to help me do that. So I could say here like four int i is equal to zero, i is less than length, i plus plus. And now I'm gonna have some code in here that's gonna count the number of s's. So I'm gonna say here, if my string at i is equal to s, or my string at i is equal to s, capital S, let's increment the count of s's. And I'll have to make a variable to count that. So I'll have to say like int, count s is equal to zero. And then I will increment the count of s's here. So I'll say count s plus plus. And then I could print f the number of s's. So I'll say like number of s's, or maybe I'll just say count the s count, percent d, we'll, we'll output the, the count of s's. And what I've, got, what I've got here now is I've got code that's looking at every character in my string up until the length of the string. And I'm checking to see if that character in the string is S lowercase or S uppercase, then increment the count of S's here. So if I run this here, I'm gonna get two S's and that makes sense because there's two S's in here. There's that one and that one, right? Now, one other function here that I'll show you in the, in the string library is the string copy function. So if we have two strings, let's say we've got or maybe we've got two character arrays. We'll say that we've got a character array here that's gonna contain a string. We'll call it S1 is equal to my string to copy. And then I'm gonna have some other character array here, S2. And S2 is gonna be capable of holding a string up until 50 characters of length, including the null terminator. But it's not gonna actually store a string yet. And what I'll do is I'll use string copy to copy S1 into S2. So I'm gonna say here, string copy, and I'm gonna say, s2 s1 then i'm going to do a printf of s2 and what's going to happen is this function here string copy is going to copy s1 into s2 and so if i run this here we're going to get that s2 is my string to copy and that's just another function here that is included in this string library here and I'm gonna make a separate video just on that library, just cause there's quite a bit to it. But this is essentially the basics of using strings, that they're character arrays that end with a special null terminator character. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.